Here's a tutorial video that will help you use Google Sheets to calculate densities of some of your lab data. And then we'll use Google Sheets to make a spiffy graph of our data. So what you should have is you should have this stuff from class. And maybe you calculated some densities from class. But for now, we're actually going to leave these blank. Um, it's OK that you have yours on your lab sheet. So go into your drive and click New, Google Sheets, and open up a spreadsheet. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to enter your data in this spreadsheet. And it will need to be in the exact format that this chart is in. In other words, the entire gray area of this chart will need to be in the spreadsheet. So it's easy for me to just copy and paste. Unfortunately, you'll need to enter it yourself unless you want to at least find this document on the Helping Friendly document and copy it and then enter your data. So pause the video while you do that, and then when you unpause, we'll continue. Okay, so we have volume here and mass here, and let's make sure this column is blank. It's okay that you have it written out on your sheet, uh, on your worksheet, that is, your lab sheet but let's leave it blank. So we're going to tell the computer to do some calculating here for us. And the first data point we have here is zero and zero, because nothing has a mass of nothing. And that's important to realize when we are constructing a graph. So what we'll do here is we will click this cell, then we'll go into the function bar. And we'll press equals, which tells the spreadsheet that we're about to do a calculation. And now we're going to click mass divided by the volume, enter. And it tells us we cannot divide by zero, which I think we already knew. But that's OK. So if you look closely, you'll see a blue square here. And if I hover the cursor over the blue square, it turns into a black cross. And that's what we want. So click and hold the clicky button down and drag it down to here, this cell, and let go. And look what it does calculates all those densities for you. But we see that these are not to tenths. So we're going to go up here and we're going to decrease the decimal places. Ooh, what do you know? They're all 1.0. So that easily makes our average density 1.0. There's a way to calculate the average here in Google Sheets. I'm not remembering how to do it. Um, but if you did want to do it, you could go up here, you could press equals and we're going to take all of those and add them together and divide by four, which will calculate the mean or the average. So we have to remember parentheses. So it would be this plus this plus this plus this. And whatever that is, we're going to divide it by how many of them there are. Four. And remember this number. 0.987. So I'm going to put it over here. 0.98. Actually, let's round it for a minute. 0 0.988. 0 0.988. Remember that number. 0 0.988. And now we're going to round it even more. And hallelujah, the average density of water is 1.0. So now we're going to make a chart. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the numbers only of the data that we want in our chart. And then we're going to insert a chart. And we get all these options. So I'm going to click this one. And you see a nice spiffy line graph appearing and a random dot over here, which is actually part of the legend. So we're going to make that go away in a minute. But it looks like we're good. It's always good to check your range of data here and here and make sure the graph is graphed properly. And in science, we always put mass here and we always put volume here. There are complicated mathematical reasons for that. Now we're going to customize. We're going to title it. This is the mass volume relationships of different water samples. And let's get rid of that legend by making none and the dot goes away. And now our horizontal axis, the x-axis, let's set that up. We'll call that volume.
and we're not going to mess with bold or fonts or anything like that. Um, let's make sure that our minimum value on the axis is zero, and we'll put in 100 here so the graph is nice and easy to read. And there are five grid lines, so let's make 10. And now, here's the cool part. We are not perfect, and neither are our measurement tools. So imagine robots did this lab with perfect tools, and they didn't make any errors. One way to see what they would get is to linearize our data and put in a line of best fit. So the line now represents perfect tools and robots doing the lab, which is obviously not possible. But we can use math and statistics to figure out what the robots would do. And now that we have sort of our robot data line, now we can do interesting things with it. But let's take care of our y-axis first and make sure that has mass on it. So this is the left vertical axis. And we'll put in mass in grams. And let's make sure our minimum value is still 0 and our maximum is 100. And let's make this 10. And that looks better. And now I want you to look closely at this. Above this cursor is this box. I can't point at it, otherwise it goes away. But you see underneath the 56, it says y equals 0 0.998 times x minus blah, 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 blah. Do you remember that 0 0.998 from the previous screen? It looks like this 0 0.998 represents maybe the density. So at the very least, you should realize that there's something going on with density and line graphs. And when you plot mass over here and volume over there, and you do a trend line or a line of best fit, it will give you this weird equation, y equals something times x minus something. And that has to do with the relationship of the line and what the line is, is like and how this relates to that mathematically. Um, and some of you in math class may have even learned about y equals mx plus b. Um, and some of you will learn it. But this is how it sort of works out with real live data. Anyway, let's go down here. And I think on your screen, you probably have an insert button here, but I don't because my Mac is being weird. So I'm going to go to full screen. And there it is. So I will insert it. And I'll make it smaller. And lo and behold, here's our graph of mass volume. And here's our data that it came from. So what you can do is you can do the same and make sure this fits on one page and you can print it out. Feel free to watch the video again and again until you get this right because we'll be using this skill more and more. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.